Beauty standards are crazy, and that's what we're gonna talk about today on The Big Deal! Big yeah. Deal! Today's big deal is beauty standards. We're gonna focus uh, for right now on some of the things women have to deal with. Um, you have Alicia Keys, she's not putting on makeup anymore because she wants to you know, show that side of beauty, of, of female beauty without all being made up. Gina Rodriguez says she doesn't wanna be photoshopped anymore. America Ferrer said the same thing. Um, as our resident woman, our resident beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. I thank you for What that. do you think about some of the beauty standards and how people are reacting to the uh, you know, different beauty standards that we have in the media? Well, I think that women have a lot of pressure right now when it comes to beauty standards because of social, like not social media only, but fashion media in general, mm -hmm. um, with all these, you know, always Photoshop that we were talking about before, and even with Snapchat and its filters, like everybody's yeah. taking yeah. the filter with the little flowers on the head. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, yeah, okay, it's Coachella. beautiful. I even did a snap that I was like, oh. okay, people, this is not how we look. Right. You know, and, and then we have to be able to to connect with our confidence, to be able to also show ourselves as we are. Mm -hmm. Like, just raw, no makeup, no nothing. Because at the end of the day, no woman is perfect. Right. And we tend to forget that sometimes. One thing is to be fit and healthy, which I'm all for mm -hmm. when it comes to, you know, health. Mm -hmm. um, but another thing is to be obsessed with looks and to be obsessed with makeup mm -hmm. and obsessed with everything that comes with it. I think Extensions, it lashes, yeah. makeup, this right. and that. Injections, that's right. like deforming that's the crazy. body. Yeah. Like butt injections now, lip injections, people with the lips like... <laughs> <laughs> you can inject anything now, it's yeah. insane. It's crazy. No, you can open your eye and then Botox and then all these fillers. Right. <laughs> Let me now. Let me. It's uh, distortioning. Let me play devil's advocate to then get Dennis in here mm -hmm. and Bruno <laughs> because uh, as as a resident gay man, a resident millennial, I think you guys deal with this. Um, obviously, the beauty standards I think is something that adds more pressure to women than men these days. But with these men's health magazines, with Magic Mike billboards, uh. with the male model, uh, uh, male underwear models, are men starting to feel a lot more pressure when it comes to being? Hot, handsome, beautiful. How does it affect you in the gay community? Okay, as a gay man, you know, I was actually surprised by the amount of friends that I have who actually wear makeup. I thought they were naturally beautiful, but then I found out they were like, no, I put makeup on. And then I follow all these guys on Instagram with like big muscles, six packs, and then it's just like, I look at myself and I feel the pressure to look like them, right. and I'm gonna keep it real. Right now, I have a ton of makeup on. When I go home sometimes, and I look at myself without makeup on, it's just like, oh, you look horrid. Like, I feel that pressure to add or to put on makeup no, even Dennis, when I'm not No, Dennis, you're beautiful. Working. Dennis, but you only have, like, powder on to yeah. not be shiny on camera. It's not right. like you're wearing, you know, mascara and eyeliner and stuff. I know gay guys that do that. Right. And to me, you know, I don't know. I, I feel that men are really attractive as they are. So, I, you know, Whoa. it really depends on who... <laughs> I don't know. Well, who you know you're who, attracted to, I guess. You know who's very unnatural? Because uh, he goes to the festivals, he's also millennial, is Bruno. Bruno, <laughs> what do millennials think, both men and women, when it comes to... Because we go to festivals where people uh, uh, want to express themselves with all this makeup and all, yeah. but at the same time, I guess on the daily, they're also rebelling against some of these Absolutely. forced beauty. So I mean, how do you balance it? So I actually, you know, at least between my friend group, it's split pretty evenly, 50-50. Like, I have a lot of friends, girls, who don't shave their legs, who don't I shave know. their armpits, who never wear makeup, even mm. for fancy events. And, and I fully uh, actually admire and respect that because mm. it's so bold to do that in this really messed up society that's telling <laughs> you to be a certain way and yeah. act a certain way. Uh, on the other hand, I have girls and guys who are super, and guys too, which, which we don't talk about it as much, but we, are, we can be super insecure about the, the way we're perceived and the way our bodies especially look. Like you were saying, all these magazines mm -hmm. and fitness. Um, as a guy, I can't speak for women, but as a guy, even at the gym, I feel threatened all the time by these giant Well, that's because, dudes. That, that, that's because <laughs> these meatheads want to beat you up. Yeah, it's like, oh my God, are you going to kill me or what's the deal? But, but no, I think overall there's a split and right. it's a good split because there's no, you know, I don't have room in my life to be worried about how much, you know, how much my eyes are open or how like exactly my hair looks. Um, Women definitely have to deal with it more. That's but, the thing, yeah. like here it's, it's difficult because guys don't tend to need slash, you know, yes in the gym and with the body and stuff, but I'm guys. talking about like, right. for example, what you said about the shaving the legs and stuff. In my case, I don't, not shave my legs because oh what what are they gonna say? Right. I just feel groomed and clean mm. 
and better with myself when I have my manicure done, when I am shaved top to bottom, that's just myself. But, you know, it also has to do with how comfortable you are with yourself one way or another. Me, I wouldn't be comfortable, not because of what people would say, right. but just because how it makes me feel yeah. in well, my own hygiene. Well, like, now let me, make, let, me, let me be devil's advocate for traditionalists or people that say, hey, you know what? Mm, no. uh, this is, these are fantasies. True. So why can't our fantasies be primped up and photoshopped and made up? And, I, you know, it's all good for people who want to make maybe a sociopolitical statement that they don't want to adhere to all these arbitrary pressures of beauty standards and I agree with you that I respect that but what about people that are like no I, I, I have a very fantasy land view of beauty and I want to see people on the magazine covers or myself beautified and if that means makeup if that means grooming is there something wrong with that but that I, idea of beauty arguably comes from the society that we live in exactly. you know what I mean? it's not there's no objective beauty per se let this go ahead and like in the past you know all these women that are on the um in the museums with all those cellulite and just right. like laying there and that was beautiful was back beautiful. in the day of course because it meant that you were rich because you could eat a lot yeah. oh, I, I wish we were still living there i would be probably super pretty first of all no, first of all <laughs> listen you're on the right show by the way because every single one of us including dennis is going to tell you that you're beautiful yeah. just the way you are but that Thank brings you. us to the last devil's advocate i wanted to play on this um there was, uh, last year, Lane Bryant had a very popular ad that we saw with, um, God, what's the best way to put it, plus-size models, and we've had plus-size models like Lorna Litz on the show. Yeah. Um, as, as a man and as a Latino man, I like curvy. I don't like, or skinny. I'm not attracted to skinny, not that there's anything wrong with skinny. Uh, I, I like, you, you know, like curvy. You like something to grab women. But, 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 <laughs> it, is, is, it, is it fat shaming uh -huh. to say that we idealize athletic builds or fit builds over someone who is arguably overweight and maybe even unhealthy. No, 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 it's not fat Go. shaming because it is scientifically proven that certain measurements and features are like more attractive to people. So yeah, maybe, you know, people who are athletic are gonna be, you know. What is the science? What are you talking about? There is, there's a science behind we it. Like there's certain measurements. We need to our definition of beauty right. altogether. To what? To, to everybody, to one that for everyone? That's No, why not at all. Right. Exactly. That's what we have now. We have that everyone is beautiful if you meet this, 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 and that. I got to say, know, maybe, right. maybe 20 years ago, but I think that it's changed enough to where there's different beauty for everybody. I think that you can be it's an overweight slowly. person. By the way, there was no Lane Bryant type ass for men. There's not, not a lot of fat men in their underwear. That oh. is unattractive. And we're going to go to the gym, and you're beautiful.